welcome back. This is Sherry with Full Armor of God. And today I wanted to come back on here with, I believe, a confirmation from a word that I posted back on April 26, I believe. And I will play that for you at the end of this message that I am relaying to you. But I was looking back through some of the texts that I texted myself with the prophetic words and visions that I had received. And I realized that I had heard the words power outage back on November 25th, 2023 at 11.05 p.m. So I decided to look up 11.05 in the Strong's Greek Concordance. So 11.05 in the Strong's Greek Concordance is the word nophos, and the definition is darkness, gloom, and the usage is darkness, gloom, a thick cloud. And it led me to scripture, which is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 21. I will start at verse 18, and it is entitled, The People Afraid of God's Presence. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. So the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. That last sentence was verse 21. Next, on Friday, March 29th, I had a closed eye vision of a darkened sun on a horizon at 10.52 p.m. So I decided to look up 10.52 in the Strong's Greek Concordance. 10.52 in Strong's Greek Concordance is the word galates, and the definition is a Galatian usage, a Galatian meaning in parentheses any inhabitant of the Roman province of Galatia. It led me to scripture, which is the only scripture listed, which is the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. And it is entitled, Justification by Faith. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. On that same day, March 29th, Right after the closed eye vision of a darkened sun on a horizon, I had another closed eye vision. As you can see here, had a closed eye vision of a long stemmed red rose in the nighttime sky at 10.55 p.m. So I looked up 10.55 in the Strong's Greek Concordance. 1055 in Strong's Greek Concordance is the word galene. The definition is a calm and the usage is a calm. It led me to scripture, the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 24. And I will start with verse 22 
It is under the subtitle, Wind and Wave Obey Jesus. This is from the New King James Version. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep and a windstorm came down on the lake and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. This is verse 24. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. Now this is verse 25. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. What does a rose in the Bible symbolize? According to Thirst, while roses are not explicitly mentioned in many parts of the Bible, their symbolism of love, beauty, and hope is present in various verses that describe flowers or the blossoming of plants. These quotes highlight the significance of roses as symbols of divine love, intervention, and transformation. A couple days later, on Monday, April 1st, I heard, I am coming to take mine own home with me at 3.43 a.m. in the morning. So I decided to look up 3.43 in the Hebrews Strong's Concordance. 3.43 is the word E-D, which phonetic spelling is aid the definition is distress calamity if you look further down where it says nasb translation it says calamity destruction disaster it led me to scripture which is the book of psalm psalms 18 verse 19 this is the New King James Version. I will start with verse 16 and go through verse 30. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me. For they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people. But will bring down haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. 
Now, verse 19 was, He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. That's the key phrase. He delivered me. Now for the message given from the Lord God on April 25th. 2024 solar flares be aware my beloved daughter solar flares cmes are sprouting out forth from your sun they are reaching your atmosphere now my beloved daughter they will wreak havoc everywhere my beloved daughter Stay prepared, my beloved daughter. Do not be scared, for fear is of the enemy. These CMEs and EMPs are explosive in nature and your natural surroundings. The energy emitted from these electromagnetic pulses will disrupt your modern way of living. Electricity, a modern convenience, will soon be history and all will want the power to come back on. Children, your focus should be on me, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not these electronic devices you've grown accustomed to as second nature. These auroras, these auroras, too, are blooming as flowers in the nighttime skies do. They are warnings of what's ahead of you. Instead of these modernized ways of life, you will be taken aback some 150 years ago when the night was black and there was not much else to do except sit back in your overstuffed chair and sleep or go to bed early. This will be a new reality for a short while until they can figure out how to get these transformers working again. Everyone will be frightened by it, but don't be. I am always near to thee. Prepare for these blackouts everywhere. Bundle up if there's still a chill in the air where you live. Use your fireplaces if you have access to them. Use this time wisely to get to know me, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if you don't already know me as my bride, get the pride out of your lives now. I am coming soon for a spotless bride, one who has made herself ready with the extra oil. I will be taking mine up with me before the foreign troops arrive on your soil america it is your duty to make yourself known to me if not you will be fair game to the enemy with everlasting love jesus your blessed hope and righteous protector for god has now, I wanted to show you the date that I received this message. It was on April 26th, which would have been, I believe it was Friday, April 26th. Now, I want to take you to a video that I believe is confirmation or a precursor to the CME solar flares affecting the earth. This video entitled the sun is super active right now 
Here's how it can affect electronics on Earth. Was posted 20 hours ago, which I'm recording this on Monday, April 29th. So it was posted on Sunday, April 28th, 2024. Scientists, it's a dynamic star, constantly in flux, sending energy out into space. Right now, experts say it's in its most active period in two decades. For us Earthlings, the signs of that are likely to be more vivid northern lights or auroras visible over a wider area than usual, and perhaps disruptions to radio and satellite communications. The person in charge of coordinating the government's response to these potential disruptions is Bill Murtaugh. He's program coordinator for NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. So, Bill, help us understand this. Peak activity for the solar cycle. Help us break that down. Activity. What are, what's going on? What's the activity? So, the sun is its like the Earth in one way. It's, got, it's a big magnet. It's got a north pole and, and, and a south pole, a negative and a positive polarity. But the sun does something a little bit weird. Over the course of 11 years, it does a reversal of the polarity. The sun is, is a big ball of, of electrically charged gas churning and rotating. And as, these, as this rotation happens, the magnetic fields turn and twist. And essentially, they wrote, it, it's a rotation of that magnetic field over that 11-year period. Or right in the middle of that, that process, these sunspots emerge and they're localized magnetic stressed areas on the sun that can produce these big eruptions. And when the eruptions occur, solar flares, coronal mass ejections, energetic particle events, they all blast material or, or energy and radiation towards the earth and can affect a lot of the different technologies we rely on for everything we do. And it just happens that Right now, we're in the very middle of this 11-year reversal process, and we refer to it as solar maximum. So solar maximum being the period of most solar activity when we're seeing the most sunspots. So that's exactly what's been happening over the last couple of years and will happen for the next several years. Is In this period of, of maximum, we see lots of sunspots and lots of eruptions that will be affecting some of our technologies here on Earth. But of course, producing that beautiful northern and southern lights as well. Are some of these solar maximums more active than others? Yes, it's, it's kind of like the hurricane season. Like some, most of us know, some hurricane seasons very active, up to twenty hurricanes. Others, not so much. You could have less than a handful of hurricanes. Same thing with the sunspot cycle. We've got some very big cycles. We've we've been measuring these sunspot cycles since 1755. Uh, the the biggest one was actually solar cycle 19, which peaked in 1953. The last couple of cycles, including this current cycle, quite a bit smaller. So they do range in in, in intensity, and and indeed it's 11 years average. But sometimes we see them as quick as like a nine year cycle. Sometimes it's all the way up to about 14 year cycle. So they do vary again, kind of like hurricane seasons. How do you measure what's going on? How do you track what's going on? So in, back in the old days, my people sometimes wonder, how did you do this back in 1755? Well, essentially, since Galileo and others invented the telescope, we've been watching the sun, projecting an image of the sun onto a white light board where you can see the sunspots. So we got this continuous record of sunspots dating all the way back to 1755. So that's a very useful database. That helps us establish that 11-year, that average 11-year cycle. But of course, Technology has evolved tremendously over the last 20, 30, 40 years. So now we've got all sorts of instruments in space, taking pictures of the sun, monitoring the sun's surface, monitoring the corona. And then we've got the in situ, the in place measurements a million miles out in one spacecraft and closer to Earth. We have more uh, instruments measuring the emissions from the sun all the way down to the surface of the Earth, where we have all sorts of instruments, again, measuring different types of, of emissions from the sun and how how they're affecting the technology and the Earth's atmosphere, the Earth's ionosphere. Tell us more about the, the practical effects of this on Earth and, and, and maybe even in space. So the, these, are, these eruptions can occur. When they do occur, there's all sorts of emissions. And when the flare occurs, there's a blast of electromagnetic radiation. It can affect GPS, for example. It can affect satellite communications. Aircraft communicating with the ground can have interference. Very degraded communications can happen. We get these big energetic blasts of particles that will follow soon after the flare. They can affect satellites. 
they affect the astronauts in space, which is a big thing going forward, supporting the Artemis missions and going back to the moon. And the geomagnetic disturbance, that's really, really important because when the CME, that coronal mass ejection, hits Earth's magnetic field, it produces electrical currents, unwanted currents that can flow right into the power grid and cause big problems. And worst case scenario can actually produce a blackout. I actually received that prophetic message on April 25th, and it was posted on April 26th. And I saw at the end of the message, it was 3.26 p.m. So I decided to look up 3.26 in the Strong's Greek Concordance, and it is the word anazeo. The definition is to live again. I come to life again, revive, regain life. Know your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, accept him into your heart, and you will be revived to live again on New Jerusalem.